All right. We on? We yeah. on? We're yeah. recording? Yeah. What do we call this? Spit and Sips. Spit and Sips. Spit and Sips. Spit and Sips. That's literally the start of every single podcast is just like, what, what do we call this? What do we call <laughs> this again? Yeah, it's sips. strong branding that we've got Maybe here. Maybe we need a new brand. New Maybe, brand for Maybe the podcast. need a new name. Who knows? Yeah. yeah if there's, Suggest names in the comments. Yeah, if there's anyone who's particularly attached to this name... Bad news for you, but it might be gone away <laughs> yeah, soon. Yeah, we might have to uh, rethink about it. No, Brendo. Happy New Year, guys. Happy, Happy New Year. Year. Yeah. Year. I know Absolutely. Larry David said famously on... Um, Curb. Curb, that you can't say Happy New Year after the 7th of January, but... Yeah, yes. yeah, 100%. 100%. I mean, I've these guys don't know it's, it's after that, but now they do. Yeah, yeah exactly. it's, a, it's a new year for us. It's the first podcast and filming day of the new year. It is. How how were your Christmases? I'm assuming both of you tucked into a couple of nice bottles across the holiday mm-hmm. period. Yes. Yes, yes maybe, oh. maybe. Who would like to show and tell first? <laughs> uh, I had, I don't actually remember the name of it. I posted up on the, the Discord channel a story. Uh, Donking magnum of it was like a, a Bordeaux blend from South Africa that my father in law actually he used to live over there, and so he brought that back. And I was just I'm just so impressed with the South Africans' ability to blend, like they are like always in blind tasting. It's if it looks f- way too French to be French, it's either Chilean or South African. Mm-hmm. And like the South Africans just are masterful blenders and it was probably like the wine of the holiday break for me actually. I had a whole bunch of really shit champagne too, but like <sighs> No such thing as shit champagne in the Australian. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's right. a paradox there. <laughs> shit yeah. champagne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely an oxymoron. Cheap champagne, like like cannon fodder. Yeah, actual like champagne, Moe, but it's like, uh, no, yeah. no, it was that JP uh one JP Morel, that, that's great. Yeah, JP Morel, yeah, it's good enough. <laughs> it's not. It's not grower champagne. Yeah, it's not what we're drinking right now. No, um, no. Also, the magnums as well around the holiday period go mm. so hard. It is such a good excuse Absolutely. for everyone to have two and a half glasses. Best magnum I had on the holiday break. Um, so I was st- uh, up in Newcastle, and uh, Newcastle in New South Wales, not in Queens, uh, not in um, England. Uh, it was where all my family's from. Uh, so I went up and stayed at my uncle's house. He's a big wine nerd. Um, and his friend was a super big wine nerd and he passed away recently and he left my uncle his entire cellar, which is which was fucking ridiculous. Oh. Like absolutely ridiculous. And the best magnum, the, the only magnum I had, I think, uh, was a 1989 Mount Pleasant Hunter Sem. What? And it was fucking stonking. It was what? stupid. I was like, oh yeah, that's why you age wines. Mm. Like, and that's why you age Semyon as well, particularly Hunter Semyon. It was just so pure, but like, Oh, it was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. So this this wine that we had was like a twenty uh, two thousand and four, two thousand and five. So it was like twenty years on it. Mm-hmm. You think twenty years Bordeaux blend, like yeah, pretty pretty safe to be mm-hmm. like in that drinking window. It totally was drinking fantastically. But I haven't. Um, I don't frequent upon drinking magnums all the time. And in Australia, it's kind of like it's just not. We don't really get like stock of them. Mm. Um, I was so surprised. I would have seen this thing in like another 10, 15 years comfortably. Mm. Comfortably. You know, it's sort of fascinating to see how slow the maturation is in the larger format. Well, I actually, uh, <laughs> as I saw for now, was on Wine TikTok the other day. And uh, <laughs> so it's strange. The, the, reason that, the reason that magnums age. More slowly is obviously you've got the same amount of oxygenation because the cork's the same size. Mm-hmm. So you've got the same amount of oxygenation going through to a larger amount of wine. Is that why they age more slowly or is TikTok lying to me? Yeah, yes. Pretty that's, that's that's pretty succinct and accurate. Yeah, pretty accurate. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you come here for, succinct and accurate <laughs> wine statements from Henry Doyle. <laughs> like, you were on here. <laughs> I suppose there would be some sort of like because larger bodies of liquid have higher temperature holding capacity, so like it also wouldn't be submitted to so, so much temperature fluctuations wouldn't at a smaller bottle. Much. Yeah, so like if it's not in an optimal cellar, um, like it's going to have some sort of like forgiveness to it. So mm-hmm. yeah, mag- magnums. The larger the format, typically like the better, but it, it does sort of have an upper end mm. as well. Speaking of um, optimal cellaring, uh, mm. <laughs> my dad. <laughs> great. You had a great, you had a great cre- Christmas uh, as well. Great Christmas. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we're over in um, we're over in Coffin Bay on the west coast of South Australia, which is known for its seafood, oysters, mm-hmm, and all mm-hmm, that. Mm-hmm. So any perfect time, perfect pairing with champagne <laughs> <laughs> or Muscadet. What did you end up having? Oh, Grange. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, yeah, don't be silly. Of course we had Grange, darling. Um, <laughs> no, so speaking of perfect cellaring, my, my dad's, um, he's turning 70 this year 
and uh, has made a bit of a thing about uh, back in the day he bought a bunch of 1983 Penfolds Grange. Do you want to know how much do you reckon he paid per bottle for his Grange back Seven, in... 17 pence. 17 pence. Yeah, it came <laughs> and with a, and a shilling. And it came with a house. <laughs> uh, I would, no, I would say like... like oh, because like the, the prices for wines like back then, especially Grange... Have like skyrocketed. It was like, like seventeen dollars. So, okay, well he did, he got ripped off then. He did pay sixty dollars a bottle for it. That's all right. Still, That's still bucks. like in like now that wine would be valued at nine hundred. Nine or that particular that wine. That particular yeah, wine yeah, would be thousands. Yeah. yeah, somewhere between yeah five and twelve hundred. But like the thing with the thing with buying wines of that age is like, how do you know? Has it just been on Nonna's fridge for the yeah, last forty years at like thirty 100%. to forty degrees? Yeah. Whereas Dad has had this, um, you know, I think he's got two dozen of the stuff sitting down the cellar, and the idea is that we're going to drink it on his seventieth. So, on Christmas Eve, Dad's made he's brought two bottles over for mm. Christmas because he wants to he wants to give it a bit of a test run before the big day because you don't want to test run on Grange. Yeah, yeah. Okay. that's wild, isn't yeah, it? With two bottles, they're probably case like of DRC. Do you mind if I just test run the first two on you guys yeah, to see exactly. if they're all right? Well, no, yeah. because quite accurately, he said, "Well, if it's fucked, I'll just sell it." <laughs> <laughs> yes. He's like, well, yeah. If it's I'll no make good, it someone else. If I don't want to drink it, yeah, it can go on. I think your dad still. needs to be a guest on one of these shows. Oh, right? absolutely. Oh, but as long as he brings a wine with him, yeah, oh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it has to come from the cellar. And Christmas Eve rolls around, and he's like, oh, we'll bring this one over on the. So we're going to someone else's house, and we'll bring this over. And Mum just goes, "Can you please just?" Can you just not make a big deal about it? You always make a big deal about it. He's like, what are you talking about? I'm not going to make a big deal about it at all. Anyway. Mains, it's strange. You have to make a big deal about Main, it. Mains yeah. come out on Christmas on Christmas Day. A bit of red meat hits the table. And then you just hear, like, not only did the uh, bottle come up out of the table, it's getting, like, the really protective paper getting taken off. Oh, waiting for someone wow. to go, what's that in? Oh, this. Oh, oh, let me tell you. Let me tell you a story. Let me tell you a story. <laughs> into it. Anyway, we decanted it, and up. I'm the most spoiled brat when it comes to drinking old wine because my dad's got a yeah, of course, amazing yeah. collection. Holy shit, it's incredible how that stuff drinks. Oh my god, it's yeah, that's what it's built for. It's yeah. like it's specifically designed designed for that exact occasion. Yeah, and went down beautifully. But God, did he go on about it a little bit? We probably yeah, spent a good forty five minutes Lent talking about Grange. So I, I'm guessing you're looking forward to his seventieth. Oh, highly anticipating his seventieth. Yeah. Or if he carks it before then, touch wood, you're oh, gonna Jesus have you, you're gonna end up having <laughs> like a decent little like kitty there at the auction. There's. Oh, mate, hey, what are you auctioning? It's not fucked. Remember, we're drinking that shit. Yeah. <laughs> we're drinking that stuff. Oh, man. Well, I'm glad that we all had a good Christmas. I'm glad mm. that we all had a good Christmas. Now, yeah. um, I wanted to hop into uh, a bit of a game for just to start off right. here. Love I don't this. know if you guys had anything you wanted to talk about, but it's no, something, really. that's, um, something that happened to me the other day. Uh, I've uh, recently started doing, uh, making, I'm sorry to say, fellas, I'm cheating on you and doing another podcast, but uh, I'm doing another podcast <laughs> with, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, it's good. You drink wine with other people. Um, I've started doing a podcast with someone and they, we were sort of like, we got thrown into it. It was a bit of an arranged marriage situation. We were doing a course and we got thrown into this group and we had to make mm. a podcast together. Yeah. So we all decided to meet up and uh, have a couple of drinks just to get to know each other. Yeah. She's turned up. And she goes, oh, so, you know, what, what do you feel like drinking? I'm like, oh, I'm having a wine myself. She's like, oh, I might have a wine. I'm like, oh. it just came up naturally that I'm on a wine podcast. So <laughs> <laughs> she's like, oh, okay, what do you think I drink? And you know what I did? Nailed it. Yeah. Absolutely nailed it. So that got me thinking, how do you go about identifying... Can we, can we backtrack? I'm gonna, I'm, I, you've got me thrilled on the story now. Yeah. What did you think that she drank? Uh, well, so I'll describe her. I'll describe her to you, okay. and then you tell me what you think. I guess okay. see if you okay. can do the same thing that I did. So her name is Lil. Mm-hmm. She is twenty two, twenty three, sort of like slightly oh, this young. Is fun, yeah, this slightly is fun. younger than me. Yeah. Uh, Self proclaimed little bit of an Instagram girly. Okay. Mm-hmm. But works in corporate and mm. has sort of put her clubbing days behind her, which is insane at 22. Yeah, that's a that, that's an early retirement. You must have gone hard for the first three. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so that would be sort of like that was, and you know, that's the sort of pitch corporate yeah. these days. Mm-hmm. Used to go out to the clubs quite a bit. Yeah. 22 these days. Got yeah. a boyfriend. Enjoys sort of like having it. Her pro, her go to cocktail would be an aperol spritz. Put oh it that yeah. Way. Well, I'm I'm going like prosecco. Okay. I'm going light red Grenache. 
congratulations, Brendan. You were absolutely correct. That's Damn. what I went as well. And she was like, "How did you know?" Well, it's got to be. It's got to be red. If like the whole corporate, the corporate thing, 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 like, corporate like, thing. it's red. Uh-huh. I was and then it's like, what's the spectrum of red? I, I went the complete opposite thing. I was like a corporate going champagne, but like, but also like young corporate. So prosecco. Mm, mm, so I mm. kind of I went and I was just immediately thinking like summer day. You see, mm. no, mm. I think you're absolutely right because that was the thing that did it for me because the clubbing days are behind it. Yes. That's where I went. Okay, That's the so sparklings out the window. Sparkling, Deciding yeah. that you're no longer getting stamps on your wrist is when yeah. you decide that you're going to start drinking red wine. That's exactly yeah. what happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> when I stopped clubbing, I started drinking red. <laughs> now I'm on to grow as champagne. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Look at how you've grown. So based on that interaction, I thought that what I might do is throw a couple of stereotypical people at you. Yeah. And you tell me what they're drinking, okay? Okay, yeah, absolutely. Cool. Okay. This is good. This is good areas. All right. So, first of all, 28-year-old male. Yeah. So, my age. My age. Our age. Our age. Our age. Play sport. Youngins. Okay. Usually drinks beers. Oh, yep. Recently started drinking wine. Mm-hmm. Ooh. His dad is 55 to 65. Yep. Grew up in South Australia. Oh, yeah. What are you giving him to it's drink? It's Grenache. Shiraz Cab. Explain. Uh, uh, like, it would be Grenache of an ilk. So, like, I think I'm gathering he drank with his dad or his dad's become, like, the, the sort of, like, uh, example set of wine drinking. Yep. Um, you know, beer in Australia and beer, like, has always traditionally been that sort of, like, quite a, like, machismo-style mm-hmm. beverage. Mm. Um, so, heavy reds, but he's the son. So, like, he wants to put his own little spin on it. And he wants to find his own identity. He can't be absolutely identical to dad because he doesn't have kids yet, you know, because he will become identical to dad mm. when he has kids. He'll realise, that's what my old man always used to say, mate, by the time you realise I'm right, you'll have kids of your own that think you're wrong. And so I'm like, all right, so it needs to be a heavier red. So we're not talking about light Grenache. We're talking about like Blewett Spring, something like with a bit of density and power. And okay, that's okay, I like right. that. So Noah, your reasoning? Everything about that was almost correct. <laughs> um, because... A, a, a new wine drinker is terrified. Yep. They are so anxious about what are being perceived as like drinking good mm. that they go to what they know. And mm. what they know from their dad is Shiraz Cab or Shiraz Cab. That's mm. what their dad drank. That's the kind of tr- consistency. Thing. And also, that's what South Australia is known for. So he's mm. grown up in South Australia, been influenced like his dad. He's started to drink wine because he doesn't want to be like known as this beer drinking you know like pub guys it's like no i've got a bit more of a refined palate yeah, but yeah, yeah. i still want to be like you know look like i know what the fuck i'm talking about so i'm like i love shiraz i love cabernet yeah like that's why i'm going there so i they pineapple penned the two together yeah exactly <laughs> shiraz cab so that's why i was going he's like he's going like cheap penfolds blend like 25 cool. bucks kind of thing like um and then maybe we'll splash out on a 389 but if it's his definitely birthday. not going pinot no, no, fuck no, 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 no. It doesn't have enough flavor. No, 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 no. What do you want me to drink? Cruiser? Come on, don't be bloody silly. I drink a bottle, of, bottle of that before I go give three cricket on the yeah. weekend. What? <laughs> See, that's you, it's really interesting because I'd obviously got a little bit of a preconception in my mind about what how I thought these questions would be answered, and it's smack back because imagine we're at a dinner, right? And that mm. bloke's sitting there with us, and he mm. goes, "What bottle should we get?" He would say. Let's get the. He'd say, "Let's get the Cab Shiraz because that's what he knows." Mm. But I think that we all know that he yeah. would rather drink the Grenache. He would rather he drink would the rather, Grenache. He just doesn't he would know. Ra- it he yet, doesn't man. know it yet. He doesn't 100%. know it yet. But you watch. He'll order that Grenache, and the dad will be like, mm, "I like me a GSM." Yeah, yeah, that's it. 100%. Actually, that's where we should have gone. That's it. It's, it's not Grenache. It's not Shiraz Cab. It's GSM. Yeah. Done. Lock had it its moment. That's what he's back drinking. when his dad was his, in his forties. Yeah, had its moment. The GSM blends. 100%. Yeah. bring it back. Also, incredible that we've just gone that whole conversation. And neither of you have realised that we were just talking about me. Anyway, <laughs> next person. I, thought I knew that. that. I knew that. But it's I, real close to home. What uh, Noah? What did your old man? drink if you drank wine so my my dad's a white guy he loves mm. white wine he is on a massive <laughs> i thought he was a white guy yeah. he's definitely a white guy Shows. um i don't know if you could tell under yeah. the lights um <laughs> i'm moving right along um yeah but now he's big into white wine so yep. la- so i grew up i was purchasing him you know when i was starting to you know get 18 it's like you know like mum and dad have had a glass of wine i was like can you run down the bottle shop and get us this it started mostly with like sav um, and then we moved to Riesling. There was a big mm. Riesling phase, but now it's all Chardonnay. 
Wow. More Chardonnay. And with a dash of Fiano in there as well. That yeah. Big fan of Fiano. They're based down McLaren Vale Way. So, you know, they're classic gonna get some local staple. Yeah. Um, but the, Dad's super into Chardonnay at mm. the minute. Mm. Um, so, always, always been um, something refreshing. He's al- always hated the heavier reds. It's just like, you know, growing up in Newcastle where it's hot and humid, it's just like, it's just not refreshing. Mm. Do you Clearly think, a beer man back in the day. Do you mm. think there's a connection between that and now his son is so in love with Shannon Blanc? Like, is that the sort of generational... Like, <laughs> I mean, it, Chardonnay for Riesling together chin and block. <laughs> yeah like that's it apple doesn't fall far yeah no yeah absolutely i think that probably i mean no i i didn't really drink much wine at home it was really the industry that got me into wine but mm. i think yeah it might be some genetic predisposition to refreshing white wines yeah what about what about you brenda what'd your parents drink my mum was so we were from like Queensland, so like Queensland, uh, yeah, big drinkers, not big growers of grapes uh-huh. and makers of wine. Like they do have a, a burgeoning uh, wine industry. That's kind of interesting to watch. But um, my old man was that sort of um, you know he, we, we renovated houses, real sort yeah. of like like handsy type, and um, I mean not handsy, but you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Good with our hands. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really glad. <laughs> Tradies, I'm really glad. I mean, talking like Forex Golds, um, yeah. like he was a real beer drinker, but I specifically remember the Yolumba cask columbard that sat in the fridge, that like forest green cask. Mm. That So it wasn't like the big four litre ones. It was always like the litre and a half. Like they were, they were always a little bit better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then like as soon as mum discovered Sauvignon Blanc, it, it was, was just... game over. Yeah. The it 90s was like, really massive on the Savalanche bandwagon she was just Savalanche. like like she'd put away one two bottles a, a sitting it was just wild I reckon also on that note we also had a bottle of Debordely Cab Sav cask in the mm. fridge at all times in like Cab that, Sav Cab Sav probably like honestly I don't even know if they drank it because I barely saw them drink it but it was yeah. always in there um, just like in a top left corner of the fridge spout over the fucking um, <laughs> over ready the to go over ready the shelf go. that black box with like the, the vine framing mm. yep. yeah yep. you know what yeah, it is yep. that's, that's what it was I remember that pretty distinctly. so we used to uh, uh, we'd always try to get like wines in, in bottle you know because it was always deemed like that's it's quality the wine you know, yeah, yeah, the the sh- you know chateau cardboard was you know a bit frowned upon <laughs> Chateau um, nerfed a card. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we used to have, this is something that's very much not South Australian, but like um, uh, in our back garden, we had a whole bunch of pawpaw trees, papaya trees. Yep. And they would get absolutely smashed by flying foxes. Mm-hmm. Um, so it is not like an uncommon occurrence. And this is the reason why dad would be like, oh, I need to buy like the cask wine is to get the bag. Now here, yeah. young kids would know, young kids, you know, 18 year olds going to music festivals, like the goon bag, the cask bag, is perfect yep. pillow. But it also happens to be really reflective and if you blow it up and tie it in a pawpaw tree, yep. it basically freaks the flying foxes out and, and leaves your pawpaws completely protected. So I, my whole growing up, we had like 20 of these fucking trees. Just dad, just like roasted on the Queenslander front patio, drinking like his 15th glass yeah. of like de Bordelais <laughs> Sauvignon Blanc. <laughs> just doing a bit of agriculture. <laughs> Carl, and it's all good. But honestly, I think if you came from South Australia and looked at our back garden, you'd think we were growing goon sack yeah. because, because there was just these trees. And exactly where the pawpaws were, just hanging out between them was just all little goon bags. Yeah, and famously, the water boxes, non-reflective on the inside. So you had to drink <laughs> goon. Exactly. Well, it's like, I'm not paying for water except for my utility. Also, have we considered, this is just something that popped to mind after you mentioned that your parents always had 1.5 litre goon sack in the fridge. Mm. Have we considered, as a people, um, adopting the phrase "baggy magnum"? Bagnum. For a one bagnum. Point. Bagnum. Is bagnum. that something that's it's floating around? Genuinely a company. It's. It's. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Bagnum is a thing. Well done, Bagnum. I mean, I'm, how yeah. long have they been around? I'm probably like eight years behind the I curve. Think it was named by a producer, and then I think one of the supply companies was like, "That's, that's a great it. name Dude, for this." It's a really good name. It's a fantastic Bagnums. name, and they're like the Bagnum design is really good. It's got like a little handle pouch. It's like perfect mm. for like going to a park and just like. It looks a little around. bit like the um, uh, what do you call them? The bachelor's handbags. The um, that's oh, exactly yeah, what they yeah, fucking look like. Yeah, like they did with a chicken in them from yeah, the rotisserie chicken from Coles or Woolies. Hundred remember yep. they used to be eight bucks anyway um i digress i uh, mean you go if you go after like 8 p.m there's always one for like five bucks it looks like an oversized on. raisin yeah <laughs> it's just been cooking for all day Dude, the lowest not lowest of lows i've hit some far depths than this but like at certain points <laughs> in my life i was that skin that i used to there was this that's a good word that i haven't heard skin in a while. is good skin, skin is, is good uh, uh without money for those playing at home uh <laughs> i was that skin that there was this local bakery that 
used to uh, do after like four o'clock. It used to do two dollar hot. Uh, pastries like everything's yeah, come down mm. from four dollars eighty mm-hmm. to two bucks, and I always used to finish work about half an hour before mm-hmm. that would hit. Mm. So there was a lot of me just pacing back and forth in front of the bakery, waiting for the two dollar sign to come up. And then as soon as it does, hi sir, yeah, sausage roll, thanks mate. Yeah, thank you, no worry, <laughs> thank you very much. Um, yeah. Now uh, back to my game. Uh, I've got another person for you. I oh, want you to me. give me yeah. an, Let's a, go. another detail here. All right, so this person. Is genderless, okay? It, not that they're not that they are non-binary. They have no gender. It could be a male or a woman. Into bouldering, cool. Rolled up beanie, mm. okay. Shirt kind of like mine, rolled up sleeves and things like that. Interesting. A few home tattoos, like yep. stick and poke, stick and poke, right. or just sort of like, yeah, my mate's got a kid off eBay. Oh, my mate's got a kid off eBay. Genderless. A so, kit or a kid? Kit. Okay. <laughs> Can't buy kids yeah. on eBay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, depends what kind of eBay. Um, what okay. are they drinking? Okay. I need to. Can I? Can I ask some further questions? Fire away, my friend. Um, now, uh, I'm assuming nicotine user. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, now, are they either uh, are they deck occasionally roll your own committed or are they vape? No, they roll your own committed. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yep. Into it. Um, car. Is it Subaru? Car's not a Subaru. Car is a clapped out Mitsubishi Lancer, but it's got a lot of character. <laughs> I was hoping for the Jimny. <laughs> oh, oh, no, no, no. I was no, 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 Jimny, no. that'd be flying. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's yeah. like a premium yeah. motor vehicle. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, I'm, I, like, surely it's Pet Hat. <sighs> surely. Nah. I, I'm not leading the witness. I want to I wanna have an it's open like conversation between the two groups. Cloudy, mousy, pino. By the pet nap producer. Oh yeah, yeah, like super like, light, super light. No, like five day skin contact. No, oh, but it's definitely early, a wine that up. that it's almost like like Laura has this habit. She knows like I smash chocolate like it's going out of fashion. I have the inability to stop myself from eating chocolate. When I understand. I, understand this. Chocolate. I, have yeah, I, to it. <laughs> I don't. I eat like like chocolate. It's really bad for you. Like the the, the cream, the this white chocolate, and like the like the milk chocolate. But mm. Laura buys like that eighty percent dark chocolate mm. right and only she can eat that stuff and i mean like not because <laughs> it's a rule it's because i fucking hate dude, it dude it is wild that people like eating I, that stuff i know i know and i reckon that's I mean, the same like, thing about know, this. some people have the you know the ability some people have the genes some people don't it's just what it is i like the I, really intense chocolate stuff well <laughs> i mean it's a great racket for her oh yeah like, you know she gets to enjoy the whole fucking block over the six months it takes to <laughs> her to eat. Yeah, she's, she's like one square but i never touch it. it i'm quite confident that it's very similar to this this particular character that they enjoy like the fact and i think laura like sycophantly she like she really enjoys the fact that i hate that chocolate dude i pray to god my firstborn has a peanut allergy there's stickers everywhere there. they can't <laughs> eat them <laughs> there's stickers all over the place i get I on reckon, my knees I and reckon pray this, this character this has the good. same thing like they enjoy the fact that no one likes their wine that's really fu- so they they actually want it to be that real barnyard funk everything like, everyone about else them is like like, like, like that that only a few select people will like these things about me like the really shitty stick and poke tattoos the nicotine thing the roll your own thing the clapped out lancer that is way too loud like they like the fact that it pisses people off mm. my my also thing with that is that everything is so like to a persona so it's like and it's, all, it's it. all on trend totally. so it's like you know it's it's the bouldering thing it's the everyone's doing stick and pokes it is like it is like a sub-genre and it's mm. very easily pigeonholed mm. and what is the biggest sub-genre in fucking wine that's easily pigeonholed in right now it's right. fucking pet nap yeah yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and I think yeah. we can we can do both we can take the cloudy fucking light ass pinot but make it fizzy yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah it's like it's like it wasn't meant to be pet nap but it ended up that way yeah 100% yeah mail and <laughs> Yeah. 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 Whoops. Mm. yeah, no, that, that's, that's what I had in mind with that person as well, to be honest. I drink with them regularly and they fucking love like, the stuff. I am that person maybe one day a week. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I sometimes get a bit that vibe too. Occasionally I go to the wrong concert yeah. during the week or the right concert if you're into this stuff. No harm, no foul. But you go to a concert, then you come out of it and you're like, oh man, you know what? I need to drink something that doesn't no. taste real good. And I, and I, and yeah, exactly. not, not to wacko. point them out. Uh, in a bad way, in a great way, actually, because it is like if you want that experience, you can get that experience in Adelaide at Lock Cellars, and it's the best place for me. One hundred percent, I go that. like I it's one that. of the, my favorite places to drink. This is yeah. you know we are we are making fun of a stereotype, but it's also like I like that 
that st- like that whole stereotype. Yeah, great that. lines. Really. So yeah, we're sitting here as three stereotypes as well. A hundred percent. Like one hundred percent. Every yeah. time we do the tastings, you're like, oh, this is fruity, yummy, and shitty. You know who's gonna love this? Henry's gonna love this. <laughs> <laughs> like, straight yeah, off the this bat. was your favorite wine from the like the sparkling wine. Oh, it's empty. Yeah. Um, Actually, speaking of which, you want to grab that pet nap while you're over there, Brenda? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Dead sure. set. This stuff that we just did on tasting recently, bright young thing. Whew. Oh yeah, honestly, some juice. Absolutely Crap. That fire. strawberry jam. Yeah, we only like we didn't drink all of that. We 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 suffered the pet nap curse of losing half of it when we opened because we we opened it warm, not cold. Yes. Yeah, so right. well. Now. Do you want one more? Yes, hit me. I okay. Love, yeah. uh, I like threes. Now, this person loves writing reviews about companies. <laughs> loves leaving a like little on, bit. On what platform? Uh, Google reviews, Yelp, however. TripAdvisor. TripAdvisor, wow. any of that yeah, sort of thing. Okay. Doesn't, isn't unacquainted with speaking to a manager. Knows okay. how managers okay. speak. Okay. Okay. <laughs> refuses to drink anything that is not at a very specific temperature. Mm-hmm. Has to be a very specific temperature. Mm-hmm. And will tell you about the successes of their children, even though no one cares. Now, that sounds harsh, but yeah. this it's is the it's person true. we're dealing with. It's the K with. word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're dancing around. Karen esque, or what's the other one? Karen's or Bob's, is it? No, Chad's. No, no, not Chad. Chad's, Chad's a completely different Chad's breed. Chad's drinking the Grenache that his dad doesn't want. We'll call him Bruce. No, Bruce is a good bloke. Oh, Bruce is a good d- bloke. D- 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 um, fucking, let's go. Oh, we need a male version. Um, Eugene? Graham. Eugene's a good one. Yeah. Graham. Graham. No, not Graham. Graham's too old. Um, we digress. What? What is Steve? this individual drinking? Yeah, what are they drinking? <laughs> Phil. <laughs> I think, uh, but to I be mean, fair, I think that when we're talking about this, there would be a his and hers pack to it. I think that <laughs> yeah. I, I think that unlike yeah. the um, the bouldering nicotine addict Lancer driver, yeah, this is a gendered wine. I think yes. so. We'll go. We'll go. Karen first. What's Karen drinking? I reckon Karen. Okay. Uh, further further probing. Um, what was their opinion of uh, and or? The vaccine slash Dan Andrews. <laughs> vaccine slash Dan Andrews. Um, I think that uh, <laughs> I think that their children were vaccinated against meningococcal. Yep. Right. weren't weren't bucking against that, but they did read some articles that had some so, good okay, points. Here, here we go. They've 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 double dose, but no booster. Double dose, no booster. All right. Yeah, here yeah. we go. Here we go. Yeah. Well, this is good areas. Um, I'm going. I'm going. Sh- uh, I'm going Shabley. I reckon Karen drinks Shabley. Shabley. Yeah, because so I think she's got expendable income, but she's the she's the, she she epitomizes the the wine joke of I don't drink Chardonnay. Can I have some more Shabley, please? Mm, mm, That's mm, my mm, vibe. Mm. That is what I'm putting out there. It's like, it's like a it's like a um, upper middle class Karen. Yeah, hundred like, like percent. Definitely like a subset of the the species. Yeah. You know, it's like they they have Karenus Arparus. You know, ha- homeowner with a um, with an investment property, but paying off both mortgages. Mm-hmm. Range yeah. Rover, Range Rover, not a Mazda CX Seven. Yeah, hundred percent. See, yeah, I was thinking more like right. Hyundai SUV, and I was thinking more like just straight up Oyster Bay. Is that uh, s- uh, like Geeson? Geeson. Geeson's Geeson. probably more accurate. Oyster Bay, like too with low. ice in it. That's yeah. how she gets to a specific temperature. That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> that is 218 what I had in mind. Yeah, ex- accident. Absolutely, Absolutely what I had in mind. And what about her partner? What's um Bruce or Kevin or Phil's. Steve oh, Phil, or Phil? Phil's or drinking anything? Shiraz and nothing but. Nah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Or I, any kind of, to be honest, like if we take I, this a little bit more globally, I reckon that he's drinking like anything from like like South French Reds. Like he's drinking like Code de Rhone or like you know maybe we'll splash out on a cross on a dash on a fucking date night or something. I think mm. Phil's drinking whatever Karen's drinking. That's because what I, I thought. <laughs> I, don't <laughs> I, don't I don't think he gives a fuck. Yeah, no, I think Phil gets told what he's drinking. <laughs> I think oh uh, yeah, I think Phil's drinking the Sav Blanc without the ice in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I think I've jumped that another that class bracket. I think you guys yeah. are in that in that slot a little bit more. We did yeah. need to talk about the cars more. Now again, for all of the people listening, if you drink any of these ones, we're not trying to have attack you. We're trying to take no, the piss no, on a no. pod. What's um if you looked at Brendo up and down, what's oh, he here drinking? We here we go. 
<laughs> Bite the hand that feeds, brother. Yeah, honestly, yeah. It's, <laughs> honestly, I think it's craft beer. Like, cra- real craft yeah. beer energy. Craft. Like, real craft beer it's energy. Like, you know, you love red ales. I like, do like red ale. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. I know, but no, I was thinking more about the the visual character. You got the you know you got a fun trucker hat. You got a yeah. good t shirt. You got the mo going on. You got the, you, mm. you're on red ales. Mm. Um, you know you you look forward to stout season every single year, mm. and you don't drink pale ales if you can't see fucking through it. Mm. Yeah. Oh, don't drink. Pale oh, sorry. No, you only drink, drink pale, pale ales, ales if you can't see through yeah, it. Yeah, gotta be yeah, opaque. Neeper, neeper for the win. No yeah, translucent. Absolutely. Yeah. That's yeah. that's what you look like. Whereas yeah. Noah is very much so. I think we've shared a couple of these Instagram videos between each other. But the Natty <laughs> Wine Bros. <laughs> <laughs> yes. On the news. On the twos. Let's see what's the twos. Hey. <laughs> it tickles the lips. Bonjour. Hello. Hello. Is we am, definitely am I, need. Can you chill me? Yes. <laughs> I'm bonjour. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, those guys are the fucking greatest. Dude, uh, Honestly, the greatest. They're very, very. Oh, uh, the funniest stuff. Anyway, that was my little. Um, that was my little stereotype game. I'll come up with more people for you next time we do one of these podcasts. I do like generalizing yeah. about people and their drinking habits. It comes from working in hospital. I so think. It, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, because you can pick it. If this you is a aren't hospital. drinking wine, though, what are you drinking? Me. Hmm. I spend a lot of time a lot of bowling clubs um, in New South Wales, like the bolo, like like. RSL bolos are the best places to drink in the entire state of New South Wales mm. because they're all like um, like community owned and they're tax free they're tax exempt so the beers are fucking cheap and, and now they're all trendy because people go there on like a Saturday afternoon to play lawn bowls and drink craft beer talk about bowling so I yeah ex- quite literally yeah um, and yeah I drank a lot of like craft beer and shit um, in those kind of places over the summer as well I've I've, good. I've only recently figured out that um I do actually like strong alcohol, like martinis. Oh, spirits, and, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like wow. short drinks. I've only recently figured it out. Um, still have a little bit of a, I don't know, toxic relationship with them, to be honest, because they are quite strong as it turns out. When you have- <laughs> <laughs> you're kidding. <laughs> you're kidding. Two or three martinis. You oh, you're on it. You're, yeah. It's game over. Yeah, like the third Negroni is always the best idea at the time, but the worst idea very, very quickly. But yeah, I've also graduated. I think... Uh, I've graduated from um, drinking beer because I want to play beer pong and get rowdy at the cricket yeah. and stuff. I now I'm now drinking beer because I'm thirsty. Like a hundred percent. I I would struggle to feel. I don't know. Like I'm not trying to be some sort of like oh, fucking weapon on the piss. So I can drink heaps of beers, but like I struggle to get like drunk off beers these days. Not that I'm drinking to get drunk yeah. all the time, yeah. but I'd way rather have like three martinis and get a nice little buzz on then try and sit there and plow through like seven to eight full strength beers and then yeah. feel like mm. I'm eating a loaf of bread yeah 100% mm. Mm. yeah no I, I completely agree beer is the refreshment for me it's just something that I want to drink to just be like oh it's really nice mm. like you know temperature wise like I want it to be really simple really clean like flavourless like lager fucking pure shit like that's what I want mm. like, oh, I, I've been off beer like yeah. severely for the like Three months. Yeah, I he took those Canadian club ads to heart, didn't he? <laughs> Speaking of which, I was actually really impressed with that sort of mar- the Canadian club like over beer. It's oh, it's, great marketing! It's a, when I first saw that, I was like, "Who's over beer?" And then gradually, I'm not sure if like it's incepted itself into my brain. Yeah, and it's not because seltzers or other other things. I just go um, to cider if I want like mm. something like low out, dry, refreshing. We don't really have great cider producers. We only got like a handful in Australia. Yeah. Um, but I think cider has been sort of overlooked. Should we make an ad for medium weight or lightweight red wine that is taking the pit like over Shiraz? <laughs> like for the South Australian drinking market? Well, this is the thing that I fucking mean, Pepper Jack is doing. They've made a mid-strength version of Pepper Jack. <laughs> it's 7.5% alcohol. Half of the wine has been uh, like reverse osmosis. And so it's, so it's half of the wine has been de-alcoholized, blended in with fully alcoholic. So it's then 7.5%. And they're calling it mid-strength. Are they calling it wine? They're calling it wine. Interesting. Because I yeah. thought the, the rules in Australia where it has to be between 8 and 22% alcohol. Oh, look, it could be like, like, like wine, wine product. product. Yeah, wow. You know. Well, it's just uh, it's just like Pepper Jack mid-strength or something like yeah, that. Yeah, something like, they're like taking that. A, they can't reinvent it, so they're just taking the leaflet out of the beer program. Yeah, no, they're just like, you know, oh, this is, you know, they want to lean into this like lower alcohol market, but also don't want to change the brand because it's so closely associated with this like fully bodied, like full bodied rich style red. So it's like, let's take half the alcohol out. I think the alcohol argument and we're sort of working on a, a bit of a thing on this with like, is wine healthy? Um, I think it's sort of, because 
no doubt I think about what can we do with Unico to be able to do something that's lower alcohol if alcohol is indeed sort of damaging people. Mm -hmm. Um, And the um, like mid strength as seven and a half percent as a wine, I think people will eventually because people live in absolutes they go well if i want to not drink alcohol i'm going to drink zero but if i'm going to drink mid strength i'm probably just going to drink beer Mm -hmm. or cider or other thing that is already four percent three percent and that way it's sessionable Mm -hmm. i'm not sure how sessionable they like i'm not sure how people are going to treat the wine at seven and a half percent alcohol especially if it's not like it doesn't feel like wine no it's also really high calories and, and if people are because a lot of it's supplemented with these like non-fermentable sugars to be able mm. to flesh out the, that, that palate weight um, the I believe it's the EU is now requiring us to put like calories and health information I really think it's a matter of time before that gets rolled out across most western nations yep. where we are forced to be able to put out how many calories are actually in our wines and I think that's where these mid-strength wines are going to fall down because they are real like as much as they're mid like lower alcohol their calories are significantly higher i've always thought it's really weird that alcohol's exempt from having the sort of calorie information because like you know coke zero that's got the information on it and i'm likely if i'm if i've run a big session on coke zero so i'll have like two yeah <laughs> but beers i'll have like more 17. than two <laughs> like, yeah I've got not like I, I'm. I'm very surprised that that hasn't been a thing earlier on. Like, why is is there a specific reason that it's exempt? Is it that that you, what, that, uh, that booze doesn't have to? Is I suppose like it's not part of your diet, so that you wouldn't need dietary information. But come on, nerds, it's part of everyone's. It's not everyone. Well, beer, beer's stuff, got nutritional information on it. Yep. Every beer in Australia has nutritional information. But wine doesn't. Them. Wine doesn't. Wine's the only thing that the only alcoholic beverage that doesn't add in spirits. Why? Well, yeah, if you ask the sort of anti-alcohol lobby and, and health lobbies, I think it's actually pretty, it's like one of those few ones that I sort of agree on. It's like, it's, I think it's pretty reasonable. Is it because there's so much variation in like fermentables and stuff? Like every bottle is going to be different. You can't have like standardized packaging. Yeah. I That's mean, why like, we invented the word ish. Yeah. I mean, there are. <laughs> I don't like, think you can use ish for calories. Well, it's better than what we've got well, at the moment. 140 calories per glass ish. ish. Yeah, dude. You could, you <laughs> could <laughs> Come on, in, in a sense, me. kind of fudge it. Like, yeah. you know how much gluck fruk you've got, you know how much alcohol you've got, and therefore yeah. you can do like a calculation. It's it's pretty um, it's pretty simple to do. I think um, a lot of those rules really sort of like most of the rules, and this is really unique to Australia, mm-hmm. uh, treat wine as something entirely separate to the rest of, of, um, sort of the alcohol yeah. industry. And, then, and the wine, say, lobby, if that's what we'd call it, because it's not really anymore, not what it used to be, um, did a really good job at separating out wine. Mm-hmm. Wine's taxed differently, it's treated differently, it's, it's got so many different things about it. And to a degree, some of that's justified, and to another, it's completely not. Mm-hmm. So I would like to know before I buy a bottle. It never used to be a problem until these non-out wines came along that have any kind of ads like sweetening or adjuncts to be able to flesh them out and make them feel a bit more whiny. Mm. Um, now that there is, I'm kind of a fan of making sure that they kind of get ousted as being a heavily doctored product that have for health reasons, actually more optimal choices uh, that are true to style, like beer, you know, or ciders or anything like that. It's a reasonable point. I do think that there, I do think that there is a market for mid-strength wine in the sense that if you're out to dinner and you want to split a bottle between two people and someone's driving, mm-hmm. that's like, it, depending on who it is. Like I'm. You know, uh, depending on how large you are as a person, how you metabolize alcohol, like a bottle between two people can very much so send someone over the edge of not wanting to drive. But everyone wants to have a bottle of wine with dinner, sort of thing. Like that's the only place that I think about it making a little bit of sense. We've got the buy the glass option. But yeah, I just you've, you're li- your options are so limited when you've got that. You've got what they yeah. have picked by the glass, and often like by the glass, they said you know you're good, but you've, mm. you see something else by the bottle you'd rather have. Yeah, but then I suppose you'd I'd probably rather have a glass of wine than. A bottle of mid strength wine. So I retract my statement. <laughs> I retract <laughs> yeah, I'd rather glass of proper wine. I think this is the thing with like everyone's trying to make these non alcoholic products and the wine industry is trying to adapt to lower consumption and this rise in non alcoholic trends. So, like, fuck, all right, well, let's make non alcoholic wine or yeah, lower alcohol wine and stuff like that. But I think personally is that I haven't found a wine product that's been de alcoholized or lowered in alcohol or anything that's anywhere near as good quality as the litany of other non alcoholic or low alcoholic beverages. So I think we as the we, we as an industry have just have expected constant growth forever. 
Mm. We've just been like, there's always more customers, there's always more sales, there's, you know, um, you know, low socio- socioeconomic, you know, third world countries are starting to get into these economic booms like India and Vietnam and all these places. Mm. Great, there's a, mo- there's a market for more product. Just China's opening up and really interested in Australian wine. Great, there's a more market for more product. Keep going, more, 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 more. Where it's just like, that's just not how wine should work. You've only got a limited space to actually grow it. So you can mm. just increase quality, you can increase market share. Like, and that's where you can get growth within your within your company, with your business and industry by value, but not by volume. We've just been always about more volume is more money. Mm. And I just don't mm. think that the wine industry should be like that. I think we should, as, as a kind of a, a thing, we should just go, you know what, you know, um, be, non-alcoholic beer is great. You guys stick to that. Or, you know, non-alcoholic spirits, yeah, go for your life. Or any of these other different products, like what people are doing, like with non, which is like a wine-style product that's not made from mm. grapes. Mm. Like, that's really good. But, like, wine should just be like, all right, we're just going to be the option and premiumize the alcoholic experience. Mm. Yeah, there, Don't have to have much. There's nothing in the world like wine. And, and that is just a fact. There is, there is, uh, I say nothing in the world. There are niches of beers niches of ciders yeah. that are like wine mm-hmm. but wine is like the 99.99 percent it is so unique and so of its own yeah. that trying to make wine like a beer is folly it's a dumb idea you're not going to out beer beer you know outside nah. cider. Like yeah just, that just be reasonable. what you are and actually add value add context i think like because that's one thing that beer and soda do actually lack for the most part is the the context of culture yep it's, we need to take wine out of the commodity product lens and make it into a luxury product lens because we've been really treating a luxury product like a commodity. And, mm. like, you know, you're supposed to have, you're supposed to go to your grocery shop and buy a bottle of wine for $10, and that's what you've been sold forever because, you know, it makes people money. But it's like, no, you should probably buy maybe a bottle of wine on a Friday night because it's a special treat. Yeah, that is something that uh, I've sort of come across a bit when I'm out doing tastings at like local uh, local bottle shops, like small scale bottle shops. And someone will just be ducking in on a Wednesday, Thursday night and they're coming in to buy two bottles of wine and they'll come and taste our stuff, which like for me coming into the world of drinking wine as I have through you guys drinking fancy stuff on the show. And it's <laughs> like, oh, it's only 28 bucks. That's a bargain sort of yeah. thing. So for, for me, our wine's priced at 22 to $32. Yeah. That's very competitive, cheap pricing. And people will taste it and they go, oh, that's really fantastic. I really like it. How much a bottle is it? And I'll go, oh, we're actually running a special today. It's uh, 20, $21 a bottle. They go, oh, that's a fair bit more than I usually like to pay for a mm. bottle of wine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there is a really specific group of wine drinkers that mm. it is like... It's like a cup of tea. Yeah. Mm. It's, the, it's the way that they come home at the end of the day and have a glass or two glasses of wine and it just it's like a cigarette or a coffee or a cup of tea like it's all of those things and it is much more as you're saying a commodity a service it's yeah it's it's part of my daily routine part of your daily routine i wake up in the morning i have a cup of coffee and i have my breakfast and i come home at night i have dinner i have a glass of wine there is there is an argument to be made to be fair and i'm on the opposite end of this 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 argument but there is like an, a fair argument to be made that like you just made those associations you know coffee cigarettes those yep. things are addictive yeah you know that is that and wine as much as the wine lobby you know strives to remove any kind of association with wine being addictive yep. that's <clears> what we're <throat> talking about come on and and that is the 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 good argument i think actually about having a floor price so at the moment the way that wine is taxed is based on the dollar value in most countries that that do incorporate wine taxes based on what's mm. called an excise system which is the alcohol content that would be a movement forward i think in the australian wine industries to tax the alcohol content which gives inherent um pressure on producers to make lower alcohol wines not necessarily like modified to seven and a half percent but not 14 15 percent down to like 11 12 mm. Ma- means they'll make smarter uh, viticultural decisions as well um but if you changed up the taxation system to create a floor price for like a minimum price which they do have in some areas um it would mean that uh you would preclude those people from actually, uh, you know, partaking in wine, which has some benefits. Yeah, uh, it's going to be a like a pity the government that tries and put any of that legislation in place because telling people that you're going to have to pay more for what they consider as part of their sort of daily routine is mm. necessity. Like it's it, to, to be fair, we have like like anyone that comes from Europe that comes to Australia mm. um, notes the difference in wine pricing. Uh, yeah. And sometimes it's really cheap, like champagne in Australia is actually quite cheap. Um, but then like 
baseline red wine for daily drinking is actually mm. quite expensive. Yeah. The, the last thing I think I want to talk about today, it, it going off the back of that, so we, we talk about my dad quite a bit on the show and he's... Uh, he's the fourth like, member, the fifth member, yeah. the seventh member of the podcast. True Blue, <laughs> loves a drink, has always... You've got a fantastic wine cellar downstairs. He is strongly of the opinion that over the next 10, 20, 30 years in this country, Australia is going to adopt a similar sort of stance towards alcohol as they had to nicotine and cigarettes in the last sort of 20, 30 years in the sense of looking at it as a like genuinely negative thing that is really problematic. And uh, cigarettes are slightly different in the sense that there's no real sort of like moderation good amount because it is as damaged. But alcohol Mm -hmm. is poison. Like it it is. Yep. Mm -hmm. It is bad for you. And the way... well, it's worth talking about but this is like what we're talking about here with the introducing a because this is what they started doing with cigarettes they introduced a base tax level to make it more expensive so it's more of a decision if you want to be a cigarette smoker so raising the floor on is that not a step in that direction sort of so um there's i've been doing a bit of study into this at the moment uh there's a great meta-analysis that was done that actually showcased that a moderate amount of alcohol this is taken in the uk um, uh, actually increased life expectancy mm, up to mm. a certain point. Um, and so the, you've got to remember the anti-alcohol lobby inside Australia is exceptionally strong. Um, that's why we've got the new pregnancy warning labels on the back of um, yeah. wine bottles. If you look at the World Health Organization, they're actually recommending that uh, we move to a system of no branded packaging. Uh, which would be devastating to to an industry. Oh, that yeah. would be wild. Which is where where obviously um, tobacco got got yeah. uh, placed. But you remember that there's there's there is tobacco and there's tobacco, right? There's there's um, you know cigarettes and there's cigars. There is culture and there is commodity, mm. and that's where in the world of wine, um, those wines that reflect the culture of the place are the wines that actually have reason for being. It's actually the, it's it's there is a subset of wine industry that a lot of the wine industry doesn't want there, which is this heavily commoditized, mm. um, pushed onto the market that does get treated as almost like this daily ritual. Daily rituals are fine, in a sense, like you hear about how. People have, you know, a little tumbler of wine in Europe for lunch and they don't seem to have alcoholism problems like we have in Australia. France yeah. has the second longest life expectancy in the world and they bread, cheese, smoke yeah. and uh, drink wine regularly as a t- part of their daily life. It's lives. what happens when you don't fight wars. It's, yeah, it's actually... Called, <laughs> you run away. <laughs> you live longer. Well, it's called the, the, it's called the French paradox uh, and it's like quite a... Or, you know, often we'll talk about like the Mediterranean diet, the Atkins diet. Uh, like a lot of diets actually do recommend removal of alcohol but a lot of those same diets also say that if you are drinking alcohol you should drink wine Mm. so of all the alcohols that do exist wine is actually the one that that probably has a um a really good chance of being regarded as the one that that could propose health benefits now keep in mind that the world health organization's main line is all alcohol is bad Mm. There doesn't seem to be much line drawn between types of alcohol. So you could say you could if you have fifteen bottles of two liter um, uh, orange juice, you will die. Vitamin C therefore is bad. So correlation and causation aren't exactly the same thing. Um, by the World Health Organization's own admittance, kombucha will kill you. Mm. Right. So this is about optics. Uh, there are currently no actual studies that I've managed to find that are readily available that showcase the differences between alcohol types as being healthy or not healthy. It only at, uh, only sees what the effects of the alcohol within those products do. So to isolate an individual molecule seems really dumb, but it is what the anti-alcohol lobby does rely upon. Mm. So I don't. I, I'm I'm cautiously optimistic, although I don't see a lot of proponents that are willing to to actually take a scientific approach and determine whether or not wine or beer, instead of alcohol or no alcohol. It's a reasonable point. Yeah. I look. I think that. So me and Dad. It's one of Dad and I's favorite things to talk about, just because, like, it, it's a fun topic. To Common be ground. Yeah. Like mm. it's a fun topic. Just the idea that something that is so ingrained in Australia's culture. Uh, well, you know, yeah, no, Australia's culture specifically, 
like alcohol is so ingrained that the we idea we celebrate of, David Byrne drinking fifty two cans from Australia to London. Bob uh, Bob Hawke having the world record in sculling the yard glass. Yeah, and like, everyone panning to him every Sydney Test match and just being like, "This is the fucking greatest moment where he sculls a beer." Yeah, exactly. But I, last what I can't life. see, I mean, I can see say where the the um, very sort of damaging and I think rightly so um, uh, legislation for, for nicotine and, and, um, mm-hmm. and cigarettes mm-hmm. and that's also in Australia recently as of this year with, with vapes as well um, but that's going to damage a couple of mega companies whereas if you were to do something like this to the wine industry it's it's thousands upon thousands of rural families and farming yeah. families and yeah. I just can't see Australia ruining farming families as a policy decision yeah. especially when it's the third largest tax paying industry Mm -hmm. in australia behind mining and agriculture especially when as it represents on the world stage a premium offering uh from our country bringing a lot of money into our country so i I don't see that as well yeah i don't see that happening anytime soon but i do see the need for wine to put its case forward as being relevant yeah yeah well it's yeah i I think it's it's more of a uh, wine is you don't hear of a lot of people getting on the wines and having a punch up like Australia. They lot of, fall asleep before they have. Yeah, their, like I, that's, I, don't, I don't see getting on the shabbers and uh, like having a bit of fun. Yeah, like yeah. I, I, I just don't see that happening. Like it's 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 these four liter casks of port that have thirty standard drinks in them and yeah. that yeah. are like twenty five dollars. And it's like, the sugar stupid. as well, which like you know gets people like you know gives yeah. the energy there as well. Yeah, yeah. like like I, I used to work in a bottle shop where we would actually sell one of those to one dude a day. Yeah. Ex- ex- and exactly, he came in yeah. shaking one day and we were like, look, we, I felt horrible doing this, but Australian law dictates that I couldn't deny him service. He wasn't inebriated. Yeah. And he passed away, you know? And it was clear what was happening. It was, it was obviously alcoholic. Yeah. Um, you know? And I was just like, we got to stop that. That's, mm. that's not how we want our industry to be remembered yeah. at all. There's a, there's so, we're missing so much if that's what, what would have happened. Yeah. And on that cheery note, um, <laughs> <laughs> no, guys, that, that was, uh, it was one of the more interesting conversations we've had as of late. Uh, Brendan, Noah, lovely to have a chat to you guys. Right, thank you. Spit and Sips, new name sip, TBD. Sip and Spits. Yeah. Sip and Spits. <laughs> yeah. sip and spits. Uh, we'll see you next time, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Cheers.